What does EMF actually do to the human body? Well, I interviewed two doctors, Dr. Sharon Goldberg and also Dr. Samuel Milham, and both have studied EMFs and their effects on the human bodies for many, many years. Let's start off with Dr. Sharon Goldberg. She is about my age, but she became a functional integrative medicine specialist. What does that mean? An integrative medicine specialist typically spends more than seven minutes on average with a patient. So that means that if you go to a doctor, you get about seven minutes with your physician. That seven minutes is not enough to gather all the information. Dr. Goldberg, she spends more than 30 minutes and up to an hour with each patient. And what she discovers is that if there are three warning signs, And what she discovers is that if there are three warning signs, if there's fatigue, lack of sleep, abdominal pains and cramps, and just really obscure pains in the body, those are red flags for environmental toxins like mold, EMF, allergens, pollutants, and other environmental factors that affect human health. If you want to learn more, watch my interview with Dr. Goldberg here, and it's a great interview. The other doctor is Dr. Samuel Milham. He is 92. He studied microsurge electrical pollution or dirty electricity for over 60 years. If you look at his bio, it is so impressive. He has over 100 papers that are published by him as well as academic writings and also actual research. For example, one study, he looked at a school in La Quinta, California, where the teacher was complaining that the students were acting um, not themselves after a cell tower was installed right next to the school. So he went over there and measured the, the dirty electricity in the school and it was off the charts. So there are meters they can use, but he discovered that there was high levels of this microsurge electrical pollution. That affects the brain function, that affects your body, it causes fatigue, quote, that it attacks your immune system, unquote. So he installs these filters throughout the school and literally within three days, the teacher called them up and said, hey, what did you do? The kids now are focusing, they don't have the ADHD symptoms anymore, they are actually able to sit and learn and study. And he's an epidemiologist. So what is epidemiologist? I'm actually trained as an epidemiologist. That's what my master's in public health taught me to do. So I have an MPH, I'm a medical doctor, I'm also a PhD in neuroscience. So, so those two years, I learned how to study populations of people as patients. So as an epidemiologist, he wants to see if there are teachers that have environments of low dirty electricity, microsurge electrical pollution, versus teachers who work in schools with high levels of dirty electricity. He found that the teachers who worked in high levels of dirty electricity in their schools had higher levels of leukemias, blood cancers, and other types of malignancies. So if you wanna learn more about this, he has a book called Dirty Electricity. Look at his interview uh, here. But Dr. Goldberg and Dr. Milham are not outliers. There are Dr. Paul and other researchers. I'll put the papers here on the screen for you. And these are review papers. But remember, review papers are a review of the entire literature at that point when that paper is published. So just because it's not a study, don't poo-poo it. Read the references. Read the references and read the individual studies that the review paper is on. Often I get this response from people who don't do research or not an academic or just don't want to like, you know, blow this whole thing off or blow anything off. Oh, it's a review paper. It's not a blinded, placebo controlled, randomized clinical trial. Well, not all studies need to be that to be valid. Research studies that are review studies are also valid. So look at the actual references in these review papers, which will 
consist of randomized clinical trials, which will consist of epidemiological studies. And when you take the data in whole, they can make the interpretation. And that's where the, like Dr. Paul, he made the assessment that there is enough evidence in animal studies and in human studies to show that in the presence of electromagnetic fields, there is capacitive coupling that's strong enough to activate voltage-gated calcium channels. What does that mean? Voltage-gated calcium channels throughout the entire body controls many functions, your heart, your brain, enzymes, and even apoptosis. Apoptosis is a fancy word for programmed cell death. So when you're in the presence of electric fields, Dr. Paul says, hey, there's gonna be some benefits because sometimes it activates pathways that will help you. And that's why we use electromagnetic fields in medicine to basically treat human diseases. One of the effects of electromagnetic fields on the brain, for example, if you focus right on the brain at certain areas, psychiatrists can actually treat anxiety and depression and other mental illness. But think of directed clinical focus of EMFs for clinical purposes as like a laser. Sharp focus and also specific frequencies that has been tested to help. But think of EMF in your house and the electric pollution that surrounds you as being like a wildfire, uncontrolled, running through your body, some good, most are bad, and that can cause human illness when the badness outweighs the goodness. So the bottom line is that based on Dr. Goldberg, Dr. Milham, Dr. Paul, Dr. Passe, all these doctors, and as I look at it and I've interviewed Dr. Milham and Dr. Goldberg, these EMFs around your home and also electrical pollution causes oxidative stress on the body and can also cause damage to your DNA cells and vital functions and pathways in the human body. So oxidative stress is something you do not want to have high levels of in your body because it will cause inflammation and a breakdown of your overall health. So how do these mechanisms help you feel better and improve your health? Well, the electron theory states that because the earth has a lot of electrons from lightning strikes, as you touch the earth with the human body or connect to it with a grounding product, those electrons can flow into the body, which we know from Dr. Sokal's paper that basically touching the earth makes the body from zero millivolts DC to minus or greater than minus 200 millivolts DC. So that helps you to receive these electrons. These electrons are needed for one, to neutralize free radicals. Free radicals are molecules in the body that has been damaged through an oxidative stress process. Remember, EMF and also electrical pollution causes oxidative stress on the body. That leads to now the formation of free radicals. And that free radical formation is very dangerous because it steals electrons from other structures and molecules that need those electrons. So you want electrons to be in pairs. So those electrons from the earth can act as a neutralizer, making a unpaired electron into a paired electron and therefore stabilize that free radical. So it also reduces inflammation through this process of having a large pool of electrons. Now, your body does have molecules like glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant, meaning that it actually can contribute an electron to free radicals to neutralize it. But that's made by the liver. Glutathione is in limited stores. So suppose you have chronic inflammation for whatever reason. You can actually deplete your body's stores of antioxidants. But when you touch the earth, it gives you more electrons. So if you're in a state of chronic inflammation, you're gonna feel better when you actually touch the earth. So how do we see that clinically? In this paper, we see that a chronic diabetic wound, meaning that a chronic wound here was defined as something that's like, I think over one or two months in duration. This wound here was bad for about over a year. So diabetic wounds are very hard to heal. You can throw antibiotics at it, ointment, 
bandages, it doesn't heal well. They put an earthing patch that's connected to a properly grounded outlet and this patient within a few weeks started to show healing and after a month, the wound has completely healed. I've seen that too in my in my personal life. And I've seen that with other people as well in the Earthing and Grounding Heals Forum, which now has like 54,000 individuals. When I first started talking about this, there's only a few thousand, but now there's 54,000 and I invite you to join. I'm an admin there. You can actually post questions and I'm pretty good at answering questions and be engaging with the people in that group. So another thing that electrons will do is actually change the electrical potential of red blood cells in your body. And in this example, a chiropractor in Hawaii showed that after 10 minutes of grounding or earthing barefoot onto the ground, his mom's blood went from red blood cells that were all stacked and clumped together to red blood cells that were individual and flowing very nicely on the slide. This has been shown in studies as well that basically the red blood cells will flow better because they're not clumped in your veins and arteries. This is fascinating because circulatory problems can lead to many human diseases when organs don't get their, their red blood cells properly or adequately. So for example, if blood flow to the brain is, is impaired, you can get strokes, memory problems, dementia. If it is impaired to the heart, you can get cardiovascular problems, heart attacks, and other problems with your heart. If it doesn't flow well to your liver, you get liver issues. You want blood flow that is excellent to all parts of the body. And if you look at this imaging here in this study, Blood flow increases after grounding using an earthing patch and a properly grounded outlet.